Hello everyone, I'm Karine Zontag from ICN Business School in France. Um, I'm a professor of economics, uh, also business intelligence and project management. So as you can see, I'm not trained in climate literacy, I'm not uh, experienced in this type of science. But still, uh, I'm teaching climate change and the transition. Um, and to do so, I would like to talk to you about two very interesting uh, activities that have been developed in France and are now very well known worldwide. Uh, I'm talking about the first one, the climate fresque, and the second one uh, needs to, to be known better, but is very com complementary to the, to the climate fresque. Um, so the two activities last three hours. Uh, this is a very interesting point in the sense that in three hours we can uh, understand uh, all the systemic understanding about climate fresque concerning uh, the first activity, but we can also brainstorm about individual and collective actions, we can debrief about emotions, because after one, one hour and a half about talking about climate change and its consequences, uh, everyone needs to talk about what they feel, what, um, what they think about climate change and, and what it, it makes them. Um, and uh, we have also the, the time to discuss about what is a carbon footprint, what are its main characteristics, and something which is very important, what are the actions that have a real impact in decarbonation? Because there's a lot of trust that if I'm doing this type of action or this other type of, of action, I will reduce my carbon footprint. But sometimes it's very marginal. And they are very important actions that we should really change. So this is one of the objectives of the climate fresque. Um, uh, let me show you what we can end up with a climate fresque. Like this is a picture of, um, of a climate fresque which has been done. As you can see, we use some cards and these cards fr come from the IPCC report. So this is another strength of the climate fresque. Uh, which is linked to the fact that uh, this data come from the IPCC report. This is scientific knowledge, there is no debate. You take the information and try to understand the information. And what people have to do in team is that they build a college, col collage, um, which, is, which are the links between the cause and the consequences of the climate fresque. And then, of course, they can do drawings uh, to appropriate themselves what they have understood in the climate fresque and so on. So as you can see, the reason why I have chosen to introduce this exercise in my class, it's because it's playful, uh, it's hands-on. People, you know, stand up, take the cards, try to find the link. They discuss the one with the others. Um, and uh, these are very important uh, characteristics. At the end of the session, people will understand the, systemic, uh, the system behind climate change, causes and consequences, uh, will understand some orders of magnitude and why it is so urgent and the numbers which are behind. Um, and uh, they will have a, a quite good time, even if, uh, you know, learning about climate change is not always fun, but they will have a quite good time together and they will build uh, beginnings of solutions. What do you need to know to perform a, cli a climate fresque? Um, first, you have to experience a climate fresque. So if you go on the website, you will see that there are on-site se sessions or online sessions. So you can definitely, wherever you are in the world, uh, experience an online session. Then you ask to be trained. Um, so there might be some facilitators uh, training, which lasts three hours. And when you are trained for th after these three hours, then you are able to do a climate frisk. So, of course, it is better at the beginning to maybe co-facilitate with some people who are already experienced. If you do that online, you can find co-facilitators wherever in the world. Uh, and then as soon as you're ready, you can develop climate frisks uh, in your school. 
you have to think that you need one facilitator for around eight to ten students. So if you have a class of 50 students, you imagine uh, four or five facilitators. There is another activity that you can do in three hours, uh, which is complementary to the climate fresk, which is called Teutons. Uh, Teutons is a game, it's a digital simulation, which starts, obviously, it started in 2023, now it's 2024, until 2050. And um, you start with your individual cal carbon footprints or simulations of carbon footprints, which in France is around 10 tons per person. And our objective, to keep climate change and the change below 1.5 degree is 2 tons in 2050 for each person in the French population. And this, of course, applies in any country. Um, so from this, um, we are playing with this digital simulation how to switch from 10 tons to 2 tons. And uh, people take four rounds of individual decisions and four rounds of public decisions to reduce the, ca the carbon footprints. So it's, th there are plenty of cards. People can choose the actions. So they can choose actions that think have an impact or they can choose action that they feel like they can really change about it. So it depends on the people. Some people play realistic, what they really feel like changing, and other play strategic. This is what we need to do. Um, the game is, is really fun in the sense that it shows the feasibility of starting to 10 tons and going to 2 tons. Because most of the people think that individually they cannot reach this objective. So the games really show that if everyone does the action and then the government takes the decision and then other authorities, I don't know, do investment or, or change this thing and this thing and then it generates influence all around the population, we end up with two tons because the mindset will change and a lot of the things will, will change during all these years. Um, it is a game that you can play on-site or remotely. And as you can see, the main learning objective is that you learn about the orders of magnitude, you understand which actions have the most important impact in the decarbonation. Um, there are also some impacts on the other planetary boundaries. Uh, you facilitate a lot of discussions about lifestyles, about the change, what people are ready to do now or not but maybe in five years or in 10 years, they will be ready to change this and this. And uh, it obviously encourages the low carbon transitions because it gives a lot of examples on what you can do and what has a real impact. Um, so that's the objective of this game. The goal is to reach two tons per person. Um, we play uh, with our own simulation, but it provides a simulation on the average of the world population. The, the game exists in the French version, in the English version with the French data, and also in English version with the world data. And of course, it ends up in 2050. To finish this presentation, here are some illustrations of data and slides that you can have in this game. So here, what we have uh, is the carbon footprint of, a, let's say, an average per French person, uh, which is around 10 tons. But as you see, it is also declined in what is the amount for transportation, for housing, for food, or for consumptions of goods or public services. And we see that in France, as is in many countries, uh, the, the carbon footprint of the car is very important. So people start by knowing why they are at 10 tons per person. Uh, then, as I say, uh, there are four rounds to choose individual actions. So this is an example of, of a card that you can find in the game. And as you can see, the, there is a budget. So there's a certain number of heart, how much it costs you to pay uh, to do this action and for each round you have eight hearts. So you need to do choice and maximize uh, your impact. 
There are also four rounds of collective actions. So you see here, this is the card, investing in households energy efficiency. This could be a, a public investment, or this could be a regional or, or European or, or another zone investment. The budget is in euro or for the international version, it's in dollar. Uh, and again, uh, you need to brainstorm in groups about the trade-off of the choice that you're making to maximize the impact. Uh, if we compare some cards, if you see these two duets, which actions have the most impact? Okay, think about it. And the right answer are these ones. Uh, actions on energy related to heat uh, often have a very high impact. So renovating the homes and, and saving heat uh, has a high impact. But some people before the game, they have no idea which action has the most impact. And they think that maybe have uh, a new electric suppliers will have a higher impact. So these are the types of discussions that we have in this game and, um, and, and in the results. Um, as a conclusion, uh, see here the type of graph that we end up at the end of the game. So it, it starts here in 2021 until 2050. And we see what is the impact of each individual action and collective action. And, and what we can really see is that it is possible. It is possible to reach two tons in 2050. There's plenty of different paths. You see here someone started at 15 tons, uh, but it is possible to, to do this. And uh, what also the, the game is really good in uh, is to show the, the social dynamic because they are individual and collective actions. They are also cards of influence. And with these cards of influence, uh, it really generates a social dynamics scenario. Um, so thank you very much for uh, your listening and uh, looking forward um, to see you on the Two Tons website to be trained in this fantastic game.